In previous sessions, we completed representing our data for our landing page that you see here, as well as our header and footer. We also took a look how to build our dynamic pages where you could add additional content. And today, we're going to start working on our blog content. And we're going to take a look how to represent our article data, including all of the details that you see, the featured image, the heading, the author, and of course, the block content. And finally, we'll finish with our recommended or featured blog post section. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. So here I am in my Strapi dashboard. And just as a reminder, we're working on the Strapi backend first before building our front end that you see here. So back in Strapi, if we take a look at our content type builder, we could see all the previous sections that we've done. We have our page, our users, that automatically comes when you set up Strapi. We created our global, our landing page, our blocks, our layout, and our shared components. So now we're going to take a look at representing our article data. Our article is gonna have many different sections. So let's start with the most basic. Navigating to Strapi Content Builder, we're going to click on create a new collection type and we're going to call it article. And let's click continue. Our article is going to have a title. So let's select our text field and we're going to call it title. And this is going to be short text. Let's add another field. We're going to select text. It's going to be long text and we're going to call it description. Next, our article is going to have a slog. So let's click add another field. And we're going to navigate to using our UI ID unique identifier field. So click on it. And for the name, we're going to call it slug. And it's going to be attached to our title field. Now let's click finish and save. Before adding anything else, let's just create a basic test article and make sure that we could get this data via our API call. So let's navigate to our content manager in article. We're going to click create new entry. I'm going to call this test post for description. I'm going to say this is our test post and generate our slug, which is going to be test post. Let's click publish. This is going to go ahead and publish our article. And if we want to be able to get access to our articles via API, we need to navigate to settings and we're going to go in user's permission, click roles click public. And here under our article tab, we're going to allow our find method. This means that we could make a get request to API articles, and we're going to see all the articles. Since we have one, that's what we're going to do. So let's click save. And inside Postman, I'm going to make a new HTTP request. And we're going to make a get request to localhost 1337 to our API articles endpoint. When I click send, notice that we are returning our article data. Here you could see the title, description, and slug. Now that we know that our API works, let's add the rest of the fields. Taking a look at our mockup, we could see that our article has a featured image, our author, as well as our content. So let's see how we could represent that in Strapi first. In Strapi, navigating back to our content type builder and back in our article, Let's create another field and we're going to select media. We're going to call it featured image and it's going to be single media. We're going to go to advanced settings and make sure that instead of selecting all, we're just going to allow image types. Now let's click finish. Next, let's add another field. We're going to use our rich text editor. So let's click on it. We're going to call it content and let's click finish. Now, before creating our author, let's add a featured image and some basic content. Let's click save, navigate to content manager, select your test post. And now you're going to see that we have a featured image block. So I'm going to go ahead and add an image. I'm just going to use an image that we already have using this forest. Click finish. I'm going to copy part of the snippet and I'm going to add it into our content block. What's pretty cool, in Strapi you have preview mode that shows what your markdown is going to look like. Now that we have our featured image and our content, let's click publish. Back in Postman, if we click send, 
notice that we're getting our title description slug and content because these are top level fields. If we want to show the image, we have to make sure that we populate it. And in this tutorial, we've been using a pattern of creating populate middleware to allow us to do that. So let's set up a populate middleware for this particular route for our articles. Make sure you are inside your Strapi application. And let's type yarn Strapi generate and click enter. We're going to navigate to middleware, click enter, and we're going to give it a name. We're going to call it article populate and click enter. And we want to add it to our existing API. We're going to select article and it's going to go ahead and create our placeholder inside article middlewares article-populate.ts because that's the name that we gave it. So in our code editor, we can navigate to source, APIs. Let's take a look inside article and you're going to see inside the middlewares folder, we have our new middleware that we just created. It's going to be very similar to our previous middlewares that we created. If we take a look inside our landing page folder, we already have an example of a previous middleware that we created. So we're going to do something similar. So back in our article populate, right after our import, we're going to define our populate object. And inside our middleware, after our Strapi log info, we have access to the context and we're going to overwrite the query populate with our predefined populate parameters. And to get us started, we're just going to populate our featured image via our middleware. Now that we have our middleware, we need to make sure that we add it to our routes. So inside API articles, let's navigate to our routes, open our article. And here we're going to add an additional object, which is going to have our config. And our config is going to be on our find method. And we're going to have middlewares and it's going to take an array. And what we want to pass inside here, the name of our middleware. And the way we could find it inside of our Strapi project, we could run yarn Strapi middlewares colon list, and it's going to go ahead and list all of our middlewares. And here we see our article middleware that we just created. So go ahead and copy it. And let's go ahead, paste in the name. Now that our middleware is added in our route, we should restart our application by running yarn dev. And now in Postman, if we rerun our query and we take a look at our response, we could see that we are now showing our featured image. So we know that works. So now let's jump back in and add the rest of the fields and modify our middleware accordingly to populate all those items. Taking a look at the blog post, notice that we have our author. So let's create our author collection type and add it to our blog post. Back in our content type builder, let's create a new collection type and we're going to call it author and let's click continue. Our author is going to have a full name. So let's select the text field. We're going to call it full name and we're going to keep it on short text. Let's add another field. Our author is going to have a bio. So let's select our text field. It's going to be long text and we're going to say bio. Let's click add another field. Our author is also going to have an avatar image. So let's click on media, single media. And we're just going to call this image and let's go to advanced settings. And instead of selecting all, let's only select and allow image types. And finally, back to basic settings, we now click add another field. And we're going to add a relation that's going to be related to our user because our author is going to be our user. And we're going to name it user ID. And let's click finish. So now we have our full name, our bio, image, and user ID. Let's click save. Now in our content manager, let's create a user, create a new user. I'm going to say Jackie Brown email at Jackie Brown at email.com. We're going to say confirm true. 
some dummy password and role is going to be public. And let's click save. And Jackie Brown is also an author. So let's go ahead and author and we're going to create a new author. Name is going to be Jackie Brown. Bio is going to be, I am a full stack developer. And for the image, I'm going to choose an image that I already have. And now we could add this relation to our user. The reason why we want one way relationship is because we want to keep all the data in the user here private, but we want to be able to easily access the author information publicly if we wanted to. So this way we're not leaking any of the user information because the user information has the password, other info, and we just don't need that. That's why we created a separate author collection type. And if the author is a user, we could reference them via this relationship. So now let's click publish. And now let's navigate back to our content type builder in our article. Let's add another field. We're going to select relation and we could use one way relationship to reference our author to the article, or you could do has many articles. So one author may have many articles. And this is a two-way relationship. So if we take a look at the author, we will see all the related articles that they wrote. Typically, you can use one-way relationship and just filter the articles by the user ID, and that way it would be more performant. For this uh, situation, this is also fine to do. And I'll show you the difference between the two relationships. So if I keep it this way and click Finish, let's click Save. Now, if I navigate to my author, you could see that we have our articles relation. So if I go to our content manager, select our author, Jackie Brown, notice that I could add related articles to the author. And because it's a two-way relationship, we will see it here. So let me go ahead and publish first. And when we navigate to articles and look at the article, we will see that our author is selected. This is a two-way relationship. If we were to only choose one way, we would see the relationship here, but we would not see the relationship here. And I kind of like this because this way we could just look up the author and see all the articles that they wrote all in one query. So I'm going to keep it this way. If you have questions about this, let me know in the comments. So now because we do have this relationship to the author, we want to make sure that we populate the author data. So let's jump in into our middleware and update it. And now in our middleware, let's add the populate logic to populate our author. So notice we are populating our author. All the other fields will be automatically populated, but we want to populate the image. And we also want to populate articles that that author wrote. And we're going to say fields, and it's going to be an array. And we just want to say that we want to get document ID as well as the title. Perfect. Make sure you restart your application. And now when we go back to Postman and we rerun our request and take a look, our content's being populated, our feature image populated, but we're not getting our author. Why is that? Well, that's because we have to enable that endpoint in Strapi. So back in Strapi, navigate to settings, going to user's permission, roles, public, and now we're going to select our author and enable find to allow us to be able to find our authors. And now we're going to click save. And when we retry our query again, let's click send and scroll down. Notice now that we're getting our author information, including their full name, their bio, their image avatar, as well as all the articles associated with them. And we only requested the document ID and the title, which is pretty awesome. And finally, for our articles, we want to give them category tags. So let's go ahead and add that to our blog posts. So finally, let's make a text collection type. Navigate to your content type builder. We're going to create a new collection type and we're going to call it tag. This will be a way for us to tag our articles and click continue. The first one is going to be a text field. It's just going to be the title of the tag. Let's keep it short text. Let's add another field. And this is going to be long text, which is going to be a description. 
Now let's click finish and save. Now that we have tags, let's go ahead to our content manager and we're going to create two tags, create a new tag. We're going to call tech. We're going to say articles about tech. Let's click publish and let's create another tag, create new entry. Oh, by the way, if you don't want to have a publish button, for instance, you just want to create the tags and have them be published automatically. Let's go ahead and adjust that. Go to content type builder, select your tag, go here, add it, and in advanced settings, disable draft and publish. And for something like tag, this makes sense. So let's click finish. So now go back to your content manager. Let's create a new tag. So now back in our content manager, let's click tag. Let's create a new tag. And we're going to call this to tutorial and we're going to say this is a tutorial article and you could create whatever tags you want i'm just making them as an example notice when i click save it just saves it and then we'll automatically publish it so that's one thing to keep in mind now that we have our tags let's go to our content type builder and in the article let's add a relationship to show all of our tags for that article so we're going to add another field to this collection. We're going to navigate to relation and we're going to select has many. And for the name, we're going to call it content tags. And it's going to be related to our tag. When you update this, this will update the field. So let's write content tags because that's what I wanted to call it and click finish. So now you see that we have our content tags. Let's go ahead, click save. And now let's go to our content manager, to our test post. Let's scroll down. Now you see here that we could select our tags. We're gonna select tag and tutorial because articles could belong to multiple tags. If you want, if you made categories, you could have one category per post, but this is the example I wanted to show you. Once we have this, Let's click publish. And now in order to be able to get those tags show in our Postman or in our API, we got to go to settings. We have to go to user's permission and roles and enable them in our API. So navigate to tag and we're going to enable the find permission, click save. And finally, we have to update our middleware to allow us to show the tags. So now in our article populate, we're going to do content tags and we're going to say true nice now that this is done make sure that your server is restarted and let's rerun our query wait let's we made a mistake somewhere oh i see what it is it's not putting the content tags in the author that's me doing things too quickly but make sure you put it outside of the author object because we're not trying to populate the author content tags because it doesn't have any, it's in our article. So let's try this again. Click send. And now we have all of our data, including the author, the articles, and the content tags. For this one, we have the tech and tutorial. Nice. And now in the next video, we will go ahead and take a look how to create our related article component that we could show on our landing page as well as on our single view for our blog post. This is going to be our last and final component to build. And after that, our Strapi application is going to be completed and we'll be able to start working on this front end build with Astro, which I'm really excited for. So we have one more video to finish up the final component, which is related articles and then do a the final review of what we covered. And once that's done, our strapping backhand is going to be completed and we'll be able to move on to take a look how to represent the data in our front end using Astro. And then we will do the same with Next.js. Super excited and I'll see you in the next one.